started the recording so that I could actually post this one to YouTube too. And Jax, we are live. Say hi to the people, guys. This is Jax. He's doing the recap shows with me if you don't know him. And Jax, after you say hi, I'm going to tell the people why we're late today. Hi, everybody. The name is Jax. Um, I'm coach of the Lakeside Rage for the CPDL, which this is the week one recap for. I'm pretty excited to go through these week one matches. There are some pretty, pretty awesome matchups this week. And then uh, looking forward to next week, I can already see a couple that are, that are looking pretty juicy, if you will. And Jax is kind enough to give me his time when um, I'm going to be honest, guys. This was supposed to start at 8 o'clock. And at 5.30, I sat down on my couch. I closed my eyes quick, laid back, and I woke up. It was 8.40. And I feel like an asshole. So I'm sorry, guys. We kind of, I was like, Jax, I called him right when I woke up. I got a text anti back anti. It's like, bro, are you okay? I know you said you were going to be live at 8. So, guys, I had a wedding last night. Shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Mike and Carly Keo. I love you both from the bottom of my heart. And I can't say that enough that, like, how much I love you guys. So, I'm sorry. Guys. So, oh, that was my volume going on. But yeah, I really can't say how much I love them enough. But I'm tired. <laughs> so, that's part of the reason why another thing we're doing this season. Jax volunteered to help me with this show. Jax is like, Tom, I love what you do. I want to be a part of it. And I absolutely love that attitude and energy. And if anyone else wants to be a part of this, please reach out. I want you on the team because that means you're going to do a good job. And that you're going to put your effort into it, which I appreciate. And that's why one thing last year, last season I did was I tried to watch every single game. I'm not going to be able to do that this season. So we're going to split up the games. Like I'm going to usually watch six. If we have three people on, I might watch four to five. And everyone's going to try to watch four or five and talk about one game each. Instead of having it so, it, it 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 watching twelve is kind of overwhelming. I'm not even gonna lie, watching twelve games is a little overwhelming each week. And putting that you know, putting that pressure on people stinks. So that's why I was like, if I want someone on the recap show, I don't want them having to watch twelve games and being like, what's it called? This is overwhelming. Like, I can't be on the recap show because I'm not knowledgeable about all the games. No, you only need to be knowledgeable about three to four games, maybe five to six games. And that's what we're going to try to do this year. But Jack was kind enough to watch all 12. Now, I only watched six today, and I got notes on them, too, because I like to take notes. I got a whole process. So I watched mine, B. Hannies, Yamas, Jade, Smurfs, Fox, Pato, Angelo, and Arceus. Oh, I only watched six, but I wrote, I only watched five, but I wrote six next to Angelo and Arceus. And then Jax watched the rest of them. And oh my god, I have a follower. Evekram TZ. Shoot. Th thank you for the follow, man. Let me make sure that alert box is up. And I'm going to replay your thing. But yeah, I feel like an asshole because I overslept. And how deep are we? We just started and we just went live. Cause, so at the wedding last night, I must have had a better time than I thought. Because at 5.30, I sat down on the couch. And I woke up at 8.40. I'm not even going to lie. I was like, I should try to come up with a better excuse. I'm not. I literally sat down on the couch after I was done working on the PowerPoint, after I was done prepping for high roller a little bit. I was like, I'll close my eyes real quick. I got three hours. I got two hours because I was supposed to be on a call with Jax at 7.30. And then he was kind enough to just be very patient and message me, are you okay? <laughs> and anti message me, are you okay? <laughs> and it's like, guys, I, I appreciate that so much. I feel like a jabroni. I just feel like an asshole for sleeping through it. So, again, Jax, I want to apologize to you, especially for you being kind enough to give me your time on the stream today. Hey, you're good, buddy. You know what? Let me uh, just do a sound check with you. I thought I heard myself fine. Can you speak? Can you say a full sentence again? Can you just speak for a, a little bit? For me? Yes, you. Just say, uh, what's up, everybody? The name is Jax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do that little intro again. Cause what's going I just want to make sure I could hear you fine on my iPad. I'm pulling it up now. And it says we got eight viewers now. So I appreciate okay. all eight of you guys, too. So that's why I want to make sure we hear you fine before yeah, we ready, start. Ready to kick off, uh, ready, yes. ready to kick off this, uh, this weekly recap uh, show. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be able to do this, uh, every week along with Tom when he's here. And, uh, yeah. 
when I'm here. Yeah, and I'm looking we, forward to this week, this week's coming matches and everything too. So, and we got you loud and clear, my friend. So I just wanted to double check that, like, nice. literally manually double check it, because sometimes I'm not the best with technology. So that's why, you know, I was like, all right, let me make sure we do this right. Oh, I got a little, you know what? Let me put the little view account in the front too. So again, this is going to be a little unorganized. I got the PowerPoint all set up two hours ago before I fell asleep at least. But yeah. Oh, it still says one on the little thing, but it said eight when I pulled up my iPad. But, oh, I got another. Mike Tinez followed. Oh my God, Mike Tinez was at the wedding last night. So Mike Tinez, I completely passed out on my couch and was supposed to start the stream 40 minutes ago. I can't believe it. The name is Jax is on the stream with me and he's nice enough to, uh, what's it called? Wait for me and everyone. So thank you everyone for joining me. I appreciate everyone for following me. And without further ado, let's start this fucking show. First match of the week was Behaney versus Yama. And guys, this was a fun one to watch. It really fucking was, man. Behaney's the reigning champ. Behaney. Oh, no, not from the past season, the season before that. So he's a former champ. And he got too old by Yama, who he beat last season the week the last week of the season to knock Yama out of playoff contention. So Yama came out with like revenge in his heart for this one, man. And it's just a immediately the first game of this season was a rematch of last season, which I love. And we see two turn one Dynamax, Reggie Alecki and Mag Mordor. The Mag Mordor damage was nuts. The Max Quake did a lot to Reggie Alecki, but it also took a lot from Reggie Alecki. So it was just like Oh, shit, man. It, it So much happened after game one, too. But game one just started so nutty. And then Behaney tried to fake tears. A Alecky it ends up being a Zoroark. So he can't fake tears at game two. Next thing you know, the it still does the damage it needs, but throws him all. He's like, oh, why can't I fake tears? Why can't I fake tears of Alecky? It's a dark type Zoroark disguising as an Alecky. That's why you can't fake tears it, man. And oh my god, that Latios move set after he set up the fling weakness policy, the shadow claw, the icy win. So when you're uh, the dragon pulse, he is a mix attacker. So when you're Dynamax, it all hits the same. You know, he knows what it's doing. But when you're non Dynamax, it still hit freaking hard on that Reggie Steel, man. That Latios move set was awesome. And then, like the Zoroark, I loved watching this game. And Yama put on a show with a 2-0 victory over a former champion of this league, man. That's no joke. And a guy that knocked him out of the playoffs. So, Jax, I loved this one. This was one of my favorite matches of the week. And uh, I know you said you watched this one, too. Do you have anything to say about this one? Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I was pretty interested in the the Trick Feeny. Oh, my God. That... Uh, I didn't see that that Yama anymore. brought. Uh, I was, I was uh, that's that's a set that you usually do not see on a Feeny, which I thought was really really cool. And he did it to uh, a Grimmsnarl, who usually uses yeah, trick. The, <laughs> the, the Zora arc too to set up the the, the, the run into like... fake tears was pretty ingenious when uh, when I saw that 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 got me when I was watching it and I was watching it on Yama's stream. I got to do more <laughs> so, research. Did Yama on stream say? That he knew Zoroark was going to copy Reggie Alecki? Or was he unsure? Like, how does Zoroark's ability work? Do you know exactly? Because I don't. I'm pretty sure it is. It copies the Pokemon that it's next to in um, your Pokemon order. Okay. I so thought it was always the six Pokemon the in the spot. On the screen, the way that he selected things, I'm pretty sure Affected. feed into it. Okay, so I got to ask him about that because that's such a cool strategy. And that's something I hope we see more of going forward in Yama's games. And he started out 1-0 in a nine-week season. That's important, guys. Each week counts a lot. Oh, God, man. This was an awesome game. And yeah, uh, and, the, and the physical Reggie Alecki catches a lot of people off guard. Dude, it hits like a truck. Oh, Yama is always the last mon. It's always the last mon. So if you put... Uh, Reggie Alecki fourth, and you only pick the top four mons to go, it'll always be Reggie Alecki. So Yama's going to reply in the chat. I don't have the chat on the screen today because I have the PowerPoint. I don't. I usually don't have the chat on the screen with the PowerPoint now that I'm thinking about it. But I'll put you guys up here. Didn't see this yeah. one, Snob. You can't... But, uh, the, the physical Reggie Alecki set definitely caught the handy off guard. I know that for a fact. 
Well, yeah. and yeah. it was pretty smart, but um, but he said that you usually don't see it, which you usually don't. But that. you also got to think, Reggie Alecki's base stats are 100 for special attack and 100 for attack. So it, it's so versatile. Wild charge. It Go gets on. the move set. It gets the move set. I like its physical yeah. moveset better than its special moveset sometimes. Yeah, it's a little more diverse on the physical side. Yeah, so I selected Reggie Alecki last, so Zoroar copied that Pokemon. Yama, shout out to you, man. That's so fucking cool how you use this Pokemon to its potential. This is a Pokemon we haven't seen used in this specific league before like that. So the fact that you pulled it off, and you pulled it off week one, and you pulled it off against a former champ who you 2 owed, you impress me a lot, man. You impressed the hell out of me this week. And I'm probably not the only one. So you probably you might have put a target on your back. But what's it called? Without further ado, let's move on to the next one, which was one of my favorite matches of the week. This is one of the few Game 3 matches of the week that I, were in uh, my six games. And, dude, both coaches thought everything out so well. The way this felt like a chess match instead of a Pokemon match. I couldn't believe it, man. He had the Frisk Dust Clops yeah, to, so. to figure out the life form. On uh, So I watched Arceus' stream. And the Frisk Clops net lets you know what the other Pokemon's abilities are. Next thing you know, he's like, Life Orb Dragapult. Okay, that's worst case scenario. So in all the little scenarios he made, he's like, Life Orb does the most damage to all my team. And the fact that Angelo realized that and was able to take advantage of that, Arceus knew it immediately. was like, okay, these guys aren't messing around. If Arceus is saying Life Orb Pult is his worst case scenario... And Angelo brought Life Orb Pult. That's so freaking cool to me, man. I love seeing that shit. You know, like, how that works out. And Angelo played great, mag like, magnificently round one. Reggie Rock was no joke. And if Angelo didn't bring his Umeral, it would have been a shorter series. And that's how close this set was. That Reggie Rock just put in work, man. Game two, Arceus was prepared, though. He, he really, he, he had the, he had to have the Clops ready. Uh, to, for the haze to set up the coal, and then it also worked for the Azumarill Belly Drum, man. So when Azumarill Belly Drummed, Arceus was calm as a cucumber. He was like, oh, all right, this is perfect. I know exactly what I'm going to do in Trick Room. I'm just going to haze. He's not going to be able to do anything. And I was like, oh, shit, man. And Arceus' team is scary. The way he positioned the board in this game specifically to have the Amoongus, to have the Dusclops, to have the Regirock set up the way he did, with the Feramosa too. It felt like every switch, he it was so calculated. And every little ally's rage powder was like to position his Pokemon in the best possible position. And Angelo played phenomenally. If Angelo made one mistake, this game would have been so much shorter. But he didn't, and that's why we got a three-game series. It was like so hyped for three games with these two coaches. And uh, you know what? Arceus was started 0-5 last season and went on a five or four game winning streak. I'm counting this is the fifth game in that winning streak. He is not playing around. He was like, oh, I get draft league now. Click, and he hasn't lost a game since. He's a terrifying coach to go up against. And Angelo as a newcomer, I kind of knew he didn't stand a chance. That's why in my predictions I picked Arceus this week too. Little spoiler alert for the predictions. But it's like God damn, this coach is impressive, man. And Angelo impressed the hell out of me, too, man. So, Angelo, keep your head up, man, because you had a good freaking week, but you just went up against a juggernaut, in my opinion. And Arceus is one of those teams I'm circling on the calendar to watch out for. And, uh, Jax, you got anything to say on this one? Yeah, uh, well, I hope Arceus prepped this week, and I knew from doing that that his team is very position dependent yeah but his team also carries the ability to be position dependent mm -hmm. very well as long as he he takes his time and he plays each switch smart it's going to be really tough to really really tough to beat him oh his team is terrifying yeah, the, the mental the mental herb dust clops that was big for him um, especially in game three, that yeah. was, that was big, um, because there was so, his team's very trick room dependent, but when I, I ran the, the herb dust clops a lot last year, yep. um, 
or last season, I should say. And uh, it, it works really well in this format because no matter what at that point, you, you're not going to stop that trick room. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You know? And the, the dominance of that Reggie Rock oh my God. out there. Nine kills. Um, yeah. I mean, it was it Nine. was it was obviously a huge factor. Nine kills. That was our kill leader this week, the Reggie Rock. And uh, you know what? I might as well mention it here. I want to do a Pokemon of the week. I legitimately was going to do that at the seven thirty meeting that I slept through because I was at the wedding last night and I slept through it like an asshole. So now I didn't get a chance to set it up this week. But if you, I'm looking at each and every one of you. Have a Pokemon that stood out. Submit it. Reach out to me or Jax and say, hey, guys, I think I want to nominate this Pokemon for Pokemon of the Week, and here's why. And we'll read the nominations each week, and I think this is a good way to crowdsource it so I don't, me and Jax don't feel like we're adding too much, but it's a good way to get everyone involved, too. So everyone, you know, like, can be a part of this, too, and be like, my Pokemon is Pokemon of the Week because of this. And I'm going to be like, I agree or disagree, blah, 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 blah. And it's going to be fun, I think, you know? So please, if you guys have a Pokemon of the Week, please submit it. Like, for Yama's team, I would put even, like, the Zoroark, even though it did that one thing well. The way it did that thing well was awesome. You know, for Arceus's team, it's Regirock, 100%. So it's like, we'll see different Pokemon of the each team. And yeah, I would love to do that going forward. And the, you know what? With that, that, going, that being said, let's move on to the next game. This is one of the ones I missed, actually. And this is Anti versus the Boy Sack. So I didn't get a team logo for the Boy Sack. I just kind of put a picture of Hattering because he has it on his team. And I figured it would be cooler than Indeedy Female. I'm not even going to lie. But Jax, do you got anything on this game? I don't believe it was streamed either. Um, It wasn't streamed. I reached out um to Anti um, because it wasn't streamed to see if there was anything that... Uh, you know, was specifically broad or specifically random to the game. And he said it was all pretty pretty basic sets, he thought, from both uh um from both competitors. Um there wasn't really bad hacks. He had a really um a really beefy um Venu yeah. that uh that the boy sack um had a tough time getting around I'm... and that allowed him to to pretty much use the other mons to uh, eliminate his team, pretty much. He said the only uh, out-of-the-normal set was a choice banded adamant Diggersby that, uh, <laughs> that with Earthquake did did some pretty hefty damage to to the hat and stuff. So. Yeah, dude, but, that's uh, a tank, though. Oh yeah, he, 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 he loves that, hat, that, uh, that Diggersby boy. Anti, right? Yeah. 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 Seventeen used it well last year and Anti took it and is running with it this year, it looks like. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the bunnies bunnies did well in week one. <laughs> bunnies did well in week one. That diggers be though. So that would be another Pokemon of the week, for example, for Anti's team who won two well. And again, the boy sack keep your head up. Anti's one of the better battlers we have here. He's one of the better preppers. And he's helping me prep this week for a Venusaur matchup I have myself. And he's been making great recommendations. So I have the High Roller League uh, Thursday at 8.30. I will not be sleeping through that. Guarantee that 99.99%. Can't say 100% to anything anymore. Because I would have told you I would 100% not sleep through this. But here we are. So... <laughs> like, I, it safe. I like the odds, Tom. I yeah. like the odds on it. I like the odds, exactly. Lunchbox, thank you for hosting with the uh, one viewer. I got to ask you how to do that because I don't know how to do that. And I feel like that's a really cool thing to do. So every time I log off, I could like go and just host everyone to Koji stream if he's live or someone stream if they're live, you know? So I want to start doing that more. So I have the BTTV app. So I got to get the BTTV app then. And literally just click host channel. I love it. All right, so it's that easy. And without further ado, let's move on to the next game. And get more emotes in the BTTV emotes, like uh, all the Pepe and Peepo emotes and stuff like that, Keck W, that sort of stuff. 
Yeah, I gotta go. I want. I asked Behaney and the moderators to make a streamer help channel in our Discord for the Champions Path Draft League. And if you're not, if you just kind of stumbled upon this video, reach out to the Twitter, join the Discord, and we have a good time there. But yeah, I want to reach out to the streamer help and ask you guys about all that emote stuff, man. Because I'm all new to this. this if you don't have have that, you go to your channel and type host username here. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I could do that from the Twitch. Yeah, you can do that anytime in your in your chat. So you know what? We're gonna try that out today at the end of the stream. And uh if Koji's still live, we're going to him. But Koji is actually one of the coaches in this game that is postponed and scheduled for July twenty first. So he is the can California War Turtle Tarwalls. California Carolina Tar Walls. And I love his logo. I'm actually covering up part of it and I can't figure out oh there we go. Carolina Tar Walls. And oh when you want to raid do that at the end raid someone. You should go to the creator dashboard and there should be a raid button. Perfect. Lunchbox, I'm gonna try that out with whoever's live at the end of this. So I appreciate you for letting me know. But yeah, Koji yeah. versus Proto. Jax, you got anything to say about this game upcoming? Uh, anything you're excited uh, to see? I've I've talked I've been talking to uh to Proto because he helps me shiny hunt nice sometime and um he's pretty excited for this for this rematch and I'm, I was just in uh, Koji's stream actually before uh, before we went live for this uh, I think they're both pretty hyped and they know each other in real life so Very it's gonna well. be it's gonna be a barn burner one one wants revenge from from last year the other one wants the same thing to happen that happened last year. You know, so I told I told uh, Proto though they were they were the lucky ones because they get two spots in next week's uh, recap show. Yes, they do. Oh wow, yeah. So I can't say uh, how excited I am for this one. Proto was Koji's coach at one point too, uh, for uh, for last season before he took over the Orlando Oshawa's team, that franchise, which is cool to say franchise about one of these teams. But yeah, so I'm really excited to see this one, and I can't. Uh, you know what? July 21st can't happen soon enough. Well, let's move on to the next game, which was Lunchbox versus KD. Lunchbox is who I was just talking to. And, Jax, you want to... This is actually one of the games I missed. I'm not going to lie. I can't make time to see every 12 game, all 12 games each week of each season now. So, I, I like splitting it up. But what's it called? Jax, you did see this one. So, take it away, my friend. Yeah, I, I watched this one. This one was a really interesting, uh, a really interesting matchup uh, that went really. It was a lot of back and forth. Um, Lunchbox ended up uh, conceding after uh, the Cinderace for KD got a first turn wake up, and then after the first turn wake up, got a pyro ball burn on the, the Torkoal to knock it out. And if that pyro ball burn did not get on to the Torkoal, which I don't even know how it could work like that, then the Torkoal would have lived. He would have ended up... Torkoal got burned? Sex. Yeah, it might, it might have been from... Uh, yeah, it, it, it might have been from... Um, oh, the P2. Yeah, the P2 was what got burned. The turtle sorry, got burned. Turtle, the turtle. And you know it's a turtle. I've done that before. But, yeah, but um, <laughs> but if that did not happen, I I think that Lunchbox would have had game one because the Lilligant that he had could just sleep everything. Yeah, and he would have just had to priority take out the Cinderace and then priority take out um the horse. Um, and then what was it in game two? Lunchbox actually thought it was over, and I'm pretty sure half the chat thought it was over. He was almost going to concede that game. Decided to play it out to the end, and then had an epic comeback. Comes back to win game two. Goes into game three, and then in game three you see KD's strat of having a room service Glastrier. <laughs> so when he brought the Glastrier in at the end of Trick Room, it dropped the speed. But he had no way to set the trick room back up. Oh wow! So once trick room left, 
the glass trier was actually the slowest thing on the field instead of at least being faster than the Torkoal and, and Pokemon like that. So after the trick room was gone, Lunchbox had the fastest three mons on the field and ended up sweeping late game. It was really crazy. Like the the uh, events that led in that third game up until the last two rounds of, of, of picking moves. And everyone in this chat right now, I see we got seven people here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Click on Lunchbox 8675309. Click give him a follow and watch all his games this season, man. I want to shout out the other streamers that I forgot to shout out so far. We have Behaney underscore 27, Yamagu, Y-A-M-A-G-U-U, Arceus is the one god, Angelo Hunter, A-N-G-E-L-O, H-U-N-T-E-R, and Professor Koji, P-R-O-F, K-O-J-I. Shout out all the streamers in all the games so far. Please go shoot them a follow if you don't already. They're all good guys. They all have great Pokemon content coming out this season. And I, I couldn't appreciate each and every one of them more. I really couldn't. I, you know what? I think this is going to be one of those games I go back and watch after the recap show. And I just get the yeah, popcorn it was, out. Yeah, it was pretty epic. I suggest it. It was, it was pretty crazy. I used to do that with Silver's games a lot. I would miss them before the show, but be like, all right, I got to watch this after because it sounded awesome. On paper, I was scared as fuck. He should be. KD is an awesome coach. He's in this league and the high roller league. He's a good competitor, and he knows what he's doing. So the fact that you were able to get a 2-1, as like a rookie in this league, man, it's very impressive to me. I gotta say, it's not it, it's not easy. It's half a joke, but having the two horses in the Cinder race is garbage. It's a garbage team. It's a crazy good team. It's so good. <laughs> it's so freaking good. But all right, which game is next? Y'all let him get two horses and the Cinder race. And the next game is Alpaca versus Tootie. And I actually saw part of this one live, but I don't. I didn't take notes on it. So, Jax, do you mind taking us away on this one too? Uh, yeah. So, this also was a pretty entertaining game to uh to watch. First of all, let me say that Elpac is the way that he streams is so calm, cool, and collected. Yes. You know, and he really analyzes everything in real time that that is going on. Like even when he was pinned in the third game, and he knew that. He wasn't going to be able to win. He pretty much called it and the way that it was going to go like two rounds prior. So that was pretty interesting. <laughs> you see it. You know? He's like the Zach Galifianakis math. With all, <laughs> the gif with all the math flying around his head. He knows what's going yeah. to happen before it happens. It's awesome, man. Yeah. He's so good at this game, too. Um, Sorry, yeah, dude. this was a big-time tailwind matchup, and you could see that develop uh, throughout all the games where – um, Alpaca had the um, the Whimsicott, which is obviously Prankster, one of the fastest Tailwind mods that you can have. But Tootie had the Unburdened Drifflim, which could match that Tailwind because of the speed once it gets unburdened anyway, which made it really sort of even keeled. And then they both pretty much get up Tailwind as fast as possible, and then the game can go on from there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, and then the game can you begin <laughs> yeah and then two they're like they're both like okay i got tailwind up you got tailwind up now we can do stuff cool you know but um tootie's um tapu coco the physical attacking tapu coco kind of well, you know it's right. the same thing as um the uh, reggie lucky from yama and the handy's match the physical attacking electric pokemon that was out there, went out there and did work because no one's expecting that physical electric to be coming at them. And with the move pool that uh, the Tapus have, it was able to take out a wide range of stuff that was on Alpaca's team. And once you're not prepared for something, whether you think it's going to be special or, or a physical attacker and it's not, it just blows your whole strategy up and you pretty much got to fight to survive. It, dude, that's, I, was, I have personal experience with that. again In Season 2, against Tyros, he used to run the elemental punches. Oh my god, I hear an echo. But he used to run the elemental punches on Mesprit. And it was like, oh god, is he physical? Is he special? And wait, Pop said, what's up, Tom, in the chat? What's up, Pops? We got Jax on the stream, too. He's doing an eloquent job of breaking down these matches. And it, it's just... 
insane to see how good these coaches are. You know, like, I got to watch Alpaca streams, and you guys could all watch it too at Z-E-Alpacalypse, Alpaca, A-L-P-A-C-A-L-Y-P-S-E. So you can watch him all there. He's an awesome streamer to watch. I highly recommend you guys checking him out, giving him a follow too. And yeah, I, this again is one of those games I want to watch after now that you're telling me about it because yeah. I want to see and, Alpaca break it down like that. Sorry to interrupt. And there was a pivotal point in game three too. Yes, where he had the Mammoth Swine out, and Tootie had Dynamaxed his Galarian Zapdos, where he should have ice sharded. Oh, because it's a priority ice type move, and he decided not to. And once you go back and watch it, look out for that 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 move, okay. that set of moves. And I think that's when that game three kind of shifted because you could see it was kind of Alpaca was in a good position up until that point. And then once he decided to take a move that wasn't priority over the priority move, Tootie's bird got to go first. He didn't pick up the kill. He got both of his Pokemon taken out. And it just twisted the whole match around. Holy moly. Wow. And this is another match where we see a rookie getting a win against a coach that we've had in the league before. So, you know what? Shout out these rookies, man. They're not coming. They, they ain't came to play. And you got anything else to say on this one before we move on? I love this logo by Fruity, too. Yeah, no. All right. Like Fruity was my, is my sleeper pick to come out of that division, so keep winning. <laughs> and yeah, I gotta figure out if I want to write Tootie or Fruity on the uh thing over here. So we'll figure that out as the season goes on. The next game is actually one of the games I watched. I feel like you've been talking for a while, Jackson. Now it's my turn, you know, to talk about this one. You could talk about it after, but let me intro it, man. I was on the edge of my seat for this entire game. The the Amoongus was like uh super fast, but Umbreon still outsped it. It got the taunt off and was able to stop the spore. The Lapras was the MVP of this team. It matched up well into everything that Pato did. Like, Pato had... Everything was weak except for the Turdinator. And Turdinator versus Lapras is a win for Lapras, in my opinion. Literally, the uh, Gigalith and the Incineroar were weak to Lapras' water moves. The Amoongus was weak to the Ice-type moves Dynamax. The Feeny was weak to the uh, Max Electric. And a Freeze-Dry when it wasn't Dynamax. And Hydreigon was weak to the Ice-type too. So Lapras was able to go freaking off, man. And Pato, you played one of the best coaches we got. The Season 1 champion, man. And it's like... You win some and you lose some. But there were just some bad breaks for Pato in this match. I thought it was a horrible matchup. Just team composition wise, roster wise, in favor of Fox. I thought the six Pokemon they brought, that Lapras was able to hit everything super effective again, except the Turdinator. And again, if it's Turdinator versus Lapras, Lapras has the advantage matchup, like the matchup advantage. So again, Fox played his ass off. Pato, another rookie, keep your head up, man. You ran into a juggernaut the same way, uh, Angelo did with Arceus, and this was a fun one to watch. You can go watch it at Fox Gopher, F-O-X, G-O-P-H-E-R. And Jax, you got anything on this one? Uh, I mean, I I watched it. It was pretty interesting. I thought Pato made some really odd plays. Uh, there was there was uh, I know there was a, an odd protect that was in there. Um, yeah. That during yeah. Dream Fox had pointed out, like that was really really weird because i don't think it benefited him as much um and if you were right that that lapis was was a clear mvp with with its move pool against what pato had yeah on the team i know um fox used ally switch a lot which is a scumbag move but um i hate we can move love ally. i love ally switch i love ally <laughs> switch i'm team ally switch <laughs> but I, I just everybody was picking on fox's team when he drafted it and in the PRs and stuff like that. And I saw it as an, what it is, as a really extremely bulky team. Um, and that's what he, his bread and butter is every season and every season he does really well. And it's because 
it takes a lot to take his Pokemon down, you know, and there's there's no getting around it. Every every year, you know that he's gonna it's gonna take a lot to take those Pokemon down. He's gonna run a bulky, and, and he's proof in the pudding that that you can win with that. And dude, he knows how to use each and every Pokemon on his roster. I, it, it's very, he's one of my favorite coaches to watch. And again, you guys could all, I highly recommend going to watch all his matches at Fox Gopher because dude is great. Dude is great at this game. It, it's awesome to see, man. He, he really does a great job in each and every one of his streams. So, so I'm excited to see him. And uh, give me one second. Sorry, guys. All right. And anything else on this game, Jax? No, that was a, it. Was pretty clean cut when it, uh, when when it went to it. I mean, when it was all said and done, wow. I gotta agree. Yeah. Then all right, you know what? Let's move on to the next game, which is Pops versus Andrew. And I did get to catch most of this uh, match live, I believe, but I did not take notes on it. So, Jax. I'm going to need a reminder from you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, I didn't take many notes from this one either. I watched it. Uh, I watched it as well. I know that Pops is another guy when he's doing a stream. He he can be so hype and into the match, you know, yet at the same time, he's going through everything on his stream. Because he knows exactly what can hurt him on the opposing team, you know. And more than once he... it comes, he, he he can get to. He was at a point in game three where he was like, I pretty much got it after. Um, I think sort of a misread on what to lead for Andrew was, oh. and Pops brought out the the perfect answer to um, Andrew's lead. Yeah, to Andrew's lead because he was really he was worried about is he going to bring the melodic? Is he not going to bring the melodic? It was it was a lot of um the who who whoever could counter the, that beginning had the huge advantage. But then almost every game at the late game, the other person would come back. <laughs> and I know I know he was up big in the beginning of game three and then there was a point at the end where um andrew brought in the shenotic and pops was like now this isn't over this is still kind of close you know but it was it was again it was a a, a close game really it, it was a game where it was close and then somebody would have a huge lead and then at the end of each game it would get close again and somebody would pull it out and you could tell the intensity on Pops' face when he would be like, no, this is That's this good. is what could happen, this is what could happen, this is what could happen. And then he'd pull out a big move and KO a Pokemon and then just get so pumped, you know? It, it was pretty awesome to watch. I liked it. I love when he does a little fist pump. When you see Pops yeah. pull out the little fist pump, I always smile and I do it myself. I'm like, let's go. I'm hyped to see him. Hyped. You know, the energy gets me energized. And I love, you know, I love it. You love to see it. And Andrew's one of my favorite coaches in this league. I love when he gets to play a streamer. And I want to watch as many of this dude's matches as I can as well. So I selfishly love that he played Pops this week. Because we get to see the dude battle. He's like just a fun dude to watch battle, man. And shout out andrew shout out pops you can watch all these matches at pops vgc he's in the chat right now click on his name and uh give him a follow if you don't he's 11 follows away are you kidding me the stream disconnected Jax, do you hear me yeah you're back oh my god it <sighs> you're back on call i don't know i did disconnect from the call It said I disconnected. You're back up now. Am I back, guys? Sorry. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. It's not even storming or windy over here. Usually, I like when it's windy, I have worse Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't get how it works, but it works like that sometimes. So, all right, we're back. It still says we have nine viewers. It's probably going to go down to zero and then pop back up to wherever stays. 
So thank you guys if you stayed. And again, shout out Pops VGC. Go shoot him a follow. Shout out Andrew and the RK9 Wolves for being like an awesome presence in this league, man. I really appreciate him for being him. And uh, yeah, I got, I got, I want to reach out and start talking to him more, man. He's cool. He's really cool in every yeah. interaction I've had with I him. I think his team has some pretty interesting matchups. I'm excited to see what he can do with it uh, going on in this season. Because I know he had a rough start last season too, but then he picked it up a little too at the end. So, exactly. and I loved his team last year because he had a colossal. And yeah, Andrew's a great guy. So shout out Andrew for being an awesome presence in this league. And let's move on to the next one. And shout out Pops for being an awesome presence in this league too. And yeah, Pop, Pops 2-1. And at, wait, you know what? I should mention this now. I was going to mention at the end. Pops did a phenomenal power ranking show. So everyone, if you have time, not right now. You don't got to leave this stream. But when you have time, go watch Pops' power ranking stream. And he breaks every match down and goes through the power ranking so eloquently. And holy shit, it says we have 12 viewers. That's the most we've had all night. So I appreciate each and every one of you. It just shot from 0 to 12. So shout out each and every one of you again. I can't say that enough. And all right, what's it called? Let's move on to the next match, which was my match. The Amoongus Bus versus the Tree Youngs. And Bananas disconnected four times. Like, it was just so unfortunate. The So the first time, it just went down. And it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I never saw that happen before where it just like, we're about to pick our Pokemon. We're in the team preview. And it just goes down. Then yeah, next, it was before you guys even got to pick anything. That was the crazy part. Yeah, I like clicked A on... I knew what I was going to lead. I go to click A and it just disappeared. And I was like, I've never seen that before. That was really weird. Oh, Matt's here. What up, Matt? And then we picked our team. And in the middle of that, it collapsed the second time. Then again, we go through the first three, few games to turn one. In game one. It the stream disconnects a third time. All on him. My stream was fine. So I kept taking pictures. We recreated it the fourth time. And before the fourth, before game one was recreated, I told him, if you disconnect again, I'm taking the match. I don't know what to say, man. Like, I'm I'm sorry we can't do, the, you know. And what's happening? How many games are left to go through? Your game is left to go through. And actually, no, we're on the second. I think we went through nine games already, Snob. We only have... uh. My game, your game, Jade's game, and MA11. So we're two-thirds of the way through. Yeah, so we're two-thirds of the way through after this one. But it this I had a lot of fun in the stream. I had a lot of fun talking to you guys during the stream. And I had a lot of fun when we could play. His Dragapult, Jinx lead, I was terrified of weakness policy. He didn't even need it, though. He didn't even need the extra damage. He was able to just knock out my Galvantula. I survived on the luckiest roll I've ever seen in my life with Colossal. I didn't calc anything right. I don't, I'm don't. i going to be honest with you guys. I thought I damage calc it right so I would survive a hit with more. No, I didn't calc it right. I got lucky. So I just got a good damage roll, and that's how I was able to survive. The max guys are onto my Colossal. Come back, kill whatever I killed. I actually don't even remember what I killed that turn. Got my 1KO with Cole, and Bananas DQ'd. Like, he just said, all right, there's no way I win this game now. I'm going to quit so we can get on to game two. And game two, he Dynamax, uh, the what's it called, the Dragapult again. He got two KOs. It was a four on two, and he disconnected again. And I told him, man, like, uh, at that point, it was already an hour into it. It was an we pushed the game from 12 to 2 because he had basketball practice. And we pushed it from, it was already three, almost 3.30. And I was like, I got to go. I can't, I got to go to the bank. I had to run errands because I was at the wedding that I was so exhausted from that I fell asleep on my couch. And that's why the stream started late. So again, I apologize to everyone for that, for saying I was going to be here at 8. And we started at 8.40. So I appreciate each 12 of you for coming. But yeah, I had a lot of fun playing Bananas. I'm glad I got the 2-0 win. And it, you know what? It sucks to see it happen like this, but it is, it happens. It does happen. And Jax, do you have anything to say on this one? Uh, I mean, not that much. Yeah. I mean, exactly. the, the match really never got, got fully going. You didn't think, you know, that's how um, I felt too. Cause he quit the game he had, one. He had a pretty epic comeback in the first game. 
Yeah. Which once again, it, there was sort of a theme all this weekend. Week. Was you would think that a match is that a game is over, and then just like in the in lunchboxes uh, match, just like in Opaka's match, you know some of these close ones, you think that somebody is gonna clear cut win or has you beat, and then all of a sudden the game keeps going, and four or five turns later it's flipped on its head, and and the other person's winning it, it, it picking up the W. So. It's pretty interesting. And I'm team never quit. I feel like if Bananas played out game one, he could have taken it for me. And then game two would have been forcing it to a game three. And he could have won game two easily, too, if he didn't disconnect. But at that point, that was a fourth disconnect. So I told him I was going to take the yeah, game if he disconnects And at that same point, you still had a Pokemon in the back as well. Colossal. He was going to lose the Dragapult that turn. Yes. No, you were next turn. Whatever was next to the Dragapult on that turn. So, I mean... It, it would have it would have still been close. And then actually that brings me to one of RCS's favorite quotes in my chat. He I once bananas messaged in general. Oh, I had that game too. I, I messaged back. I don't know, man. I had Cole coming in. And RCS just said, I need as much confidence as Tom has in Cole. <laughs> and I couldn't stop laughing at that little comment. That really got me going. Because he's like, Yeah, you just think this thing could do anything. And I, I really do think he could do anything in this Pokemon. Cole is the most versatile Pokemon in the world. And I appreciate Colossal. And I'm glad I got it with the first overall pick. But this was a fun match. Again, it just felt like it never got going. I feel like that's a great way to describe it, Jax. That's actually a great way to describe it. And uh, let's move on to the next one, which was a lot of fun. And that was Snom versus number 17. And Jax, take it away, bud. Uh, well, Snom already released... Uh basically the play-by-play -play of uh, of what happened in this. Ooh. It was really odd once he put up the stats for this game in the um, part of the Discord for, for um, the match reports. Let me go look at that. There was only like, there was only like seven deaths One. to report in the, in this whole thing. It was really crazy. Even Bahani was like, are we sure like this is the count? Because this doesn't seem right, but in looking at what Snom had out there, I mean, um, a Pokemon would set hail, and then the Morgum died because of Sl Galar Slowbro's own hail damage. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. So the, that same Galar Slowbro would take life orb damage, also killing itself, you know? Um, <laughs> it, it was it's just, it, it's crazy to see Sandstorm damage that kills Tangrowth but doesn't kill Entei because Entei has leftovers at the end of a turn. Later on, Sandstorm damage that ends up killing uh, another Pokemon. It was just really weird how much residual damage ended up playing a factor in this game. Um, I w really wish it was streamed because, it, unfortunately, it wasn't streamed. But uh, You can't stream them all. It, it, it seems kind of crazy, really really sort of res residual hacks was going on and it played a, a definite part in this for sure. And I think, I don't know if it was 17, excuse me, or um, Snom that said something like in one turn there was a crit or a miss and then immediately after that residual damage that also took out a Pokemon or something like that. Like, it just seemed like there was really, really crazy deaths that happened in this for there only to be like seven actual counted deaths in a win that went too well. Yeah, it was five on the Snom side, four for Lele, one for Darm, and three. So there were eight total deaths. Slowbro, Galarian, and Urshifu got one kill, and Slowbro got two. So it was like, there were really not, there were eight deaths total. Usually that's how many are in a game one. Oh, he self-missed a swagger and got crit by a Max Quake. All right, so you know what? That It's so demoralizing when something like that happens. And I really hope 17 doesn't let this momentum, this negative momentum, reach out to game, week two. I really hope he gets this. I don't know who he's playing in week two, but I'm rooting for him now just because you hate to see it. You hate to see it. The, the worst part is the crit mattered. The crits usually always matter. <laughs> crits are, oh, God, man. That's a dagger to the heart. Uh, so I, I want to see 17 come back from that. Congratulations, Snom on the win. 
but oh my god, a self miss swagger crit. Oh my god. With all those random hacks, uh, it's, it's... that's must have been a frustrating game for seventeen. So I feel for him. And you know what? Let's move on to the next game. And Smurf versus Jade. Jade versus Smurf. This was again, I love Smurf's Twitch name, Bum Trash Garbage. Go follow him on Twitch. One of the best Twitch names we got. And god damn. Facts. What's up? <laughs> That's facts. Facts. It's the yeah. best Twitch name ever. Dude, this match was fun. This match was a lot of fun. There were only three moves on Fermos. He forgot U turn, which didn't even matter at the end, really, I think. It was just funny to see that happen. The Jade had fake out and Didi expecting Thwacky to change the terrain. Like, that's so awesome from Jade. You know, he was able to get the psychic terrain back with a um, Smurf was with the. Oh, no, Jade was with the Max Mindstorm uh, from the Hatterene. So he was able to get it back. And then we saw a special weakness policy Dragonite from Smurf, which would have mattered more if the Quick Claw Hatterene didn't, like, just fuck everything up, man. Like, this Quick Claw Hatterene was really the bane. Of Smurf's existence for a while. He he knocked it off and was just so happy to get that quick claw off of it. You could hear it in his voice. The relief saying, oh, God, all right, no more quick claw. And, like, oh, God, I didn't expect the Grassy Glade on, Thw Grassy Glide on Thwacky to KO Rhyperior. Like, that was insane to me, how much damage that did. The, what's it called? Massive Haxorus Dragon Claw, that was nuts. And, again, the Smurf three moves on Pheromosa made me laugh. The fake out on Ndidi was just so freaking cool. Jade's moveset on that Ndidi was like, fake out, protect. <laughs> you don't usually, you know, that's without follow me or anything. And then the Max Cinderace is so strong. It matches up so well. And there's so many different Pokemon. And again, once Thwacky knocked off the Quick Claw, you could hear the relief in Smurf's voice. This was a fun match to watch. The Cinderace was confused again. And it was over. Oh, yes. Yeah, Cinderace hurt itself in confusion G Max at one point, too. And this time it got confused again. It didn't matter, though. And right when Smurf won, he said something really cool. He said dubs in the chat, which I was like, oh my God, that's like a, a very cool thing to say. So I, I thought that was cool. So shout out Smurf for being cool. And then shout out Jade because he's awesome, too. But yeah, no, that was a badass thing to say after a win. Dubs in the chat. I like that one. So. This was a lot of fun, man. I gotta say, like this was one of the better matches I've seen. And Jack, you got anything to say on this one? Yeah, this was this one was uh, was pretty fun. I mean, I was working during this, so it took me like two hours with all the buffering that Twitch had to do um, to be able to watch this whole thing. But uh, Jade, Jade's Jade's team comp is very interesting. Yes. And he's guys. He's gonna have to do a lot of work to win, which I think is a good challenge for him. Um, but I know he just didn't have it working, boy. They that Cinderace effed him up. Dude, Cinderace and, is one of those Pokemon that could do that, that to any team, though. Yeah, but I know I noticed that with uh, the beginning of I believe it was the uh, the first game. They both came out with their terrain setters because Smurf wanted to get the psychic terrain off. So he knew that the Thwacky would set up the grassy terrain. And Jade brought Fake a cryo out. move on his Ndidi like, for that exact nuts. thing. I can't get over it. And Smurf, Smurf was talking to KD in the chat and was like, I told you he was going to have fake out on that thing. <laughs> and it was like, that is, that, that's the level of crazy that, that Jade is. Well, that's again back to the Angelo Arceus matchup. It was like they both knew what they were both playing mind chess before the match. And I feel the same thing happened here with Smurf and Jade. They were playing like chess mind games just so much like, is he going to do this? If I do this, is he going to do this? And the fake out on Ndidi was exactly because he knew the Thwacky was going to come and change the train. It was just masterful to see how it played out. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. It was guys. just the just he was thinking just in case this Thwacky makes this terrain change, I can use this move and look like a genius. But if it, if it doesn't, I'm not even going to worry about a fake out. Let's not even let people know that I've got fake out on this thing. You know, I don't got to click it if I don't need it. But if I need it, it's there. 
right? And then that allowed him to have the the that was when you saw the first quick claw proc happen, and I, everybody was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" A Hatterene with with quick claw, get out of here. Get out, out of town. Get, that thing out. get out of town. That's crazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You love it, man. Oh, my God. Again, this was one of my favorite matches to watch. And Jade's one of the best coaches we got. So to see him get an early loss is crazy. See Smurf get the early win. Congratulations. Yeah, that's Cinderace. Boy, I had it last season. Cinderace in a draft format is insane. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. Oh, wow. And Jax... Without further ado, the last match of the week, we saved the best one for last. I didn't get a chance to watch it, I'm not going to lie. This is like one of the ones I have circled to watch next. So please tell me about your match today against MA11, Matt, who was able to get the 2-0 win, who is a new coach, yeah. one of the rookies. So this is the third rookie to get a victory. And by the way, Jax, I love your new logo. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, this is... Uh, this was definitely he played this really really well i actually had prep was prepping all week with um i i used azov fairly well um and i was prepping all week with it to be av and i ended up switching it mm. before the match and that played a huge part in in it getting taken out because he played the ndd that he had masterfully absolutely yeah. masterfully uh, i i think it was that would be definitely a nomination for me for for a pokemon, pokemon of, the of the week, week. just the way that i i didn't focus on it the way i i should have and it just put in work against half of my team um yeah. you know i i wanted to be able to show off the azelf and then i ended up koing nine tails game two and he used Shadow Ball on me. I didn't even, I was writing the KO down and then look up and my Azelf, my Dynamax Azelf is like at like 60 HP. And I was like, what the hell happened to this thing? <laughs> That's yeah. the worst feeling ever. I was, I was like, I looked up like, I'm like, oh my God, what the, what, what, what did he, did he, did he explode or something? Did I, did I miss something really, really huge? I was like, no, everything's, everything's cool. All right. Yeah. No, we got that. Oh God. You know, um, I wasn't expecting him to bring as many special attackers to the yeah. game, which was a great play on him because that was something that I wasn't expecting. You know, uh, mostly through the prep, I wanted to make sure that I could worry about the Thunderous and uh, worry about the Urshifu. Also, he had the Ur Urshifu with uh, the Choice Scarf, mm. which I figure it would have been banded or you know sashed or something like that. Something the usual. Something more basic. Yeah. But that thing being able to be faster than the other mons that I had that would usually be taking it out was a great play. Had I had AV, unfortunately, I would have been able to live that and then oh. retaliate, take out some of this Pokemon. But, you know, those, those are the breaks sometimes. You, you try to make, you know, corrections and you big brain yourself too much during prep. You know what I mean? And these matches but, uh, could fair go. Play, and he played it really, really well. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, it, it sounds like it, man. And I was going to say, these matches could go one way or the other based on one item, one move, one miss, one crit. And it's crazy to see the butterfly effect from all of that. So, wow. Uh, no. I mean, I definitely, game one, I thought I had, um, I thought I had everything was going the way that I wanted it to, other than he crit, dazzling, and gleamed my persian which knocked it out which oh. was unfortunate but i was like it's still okay i can bring in my meow stick we'll be fine and then he brought in the urshifu and went first and i was like that's not supposed to happen this is odd you know because oh, it was scarf yeah oh no yeah you hate to see it so yeah, matt but played his ass that's, off. he prepped really well so oh wow and yeah this was our last match of the week and i gotta say this did not disappoint Shout out to each and every one of the 24 competitors in the league, including myself. I guess I just shouted myself out. So that's awesome. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it, Tom. But without further ado, let's move on. I've been saying that a lot. I like that phrase. Let's move on to the week one prediction score. Let me move my face out of here if I can. There we go. 
So no one got more than six out of eleven right. Me and Snom got six out of eleven. No, many late nights with Snom. I've been there before. Snom's awesome to prep with, man. Snom is really cool to prep with. He takes so much time out of his day to help every each and every one of us if we ask him. And I, I really couldn't appreciate that more. So yeah, this I, this is the way I'm gonna try to keep the prediction score this year. I'm gonna screenshot it and if you submit predictions, I'm gonna add your name to the list and just do an Excel spreadsheet so it's a little neater this year. So that's one of the changes I'm gonna make. And shout out Jax, you had the bet no, you went five hundred, so you had the second best uh prediction percentage. And yeah, me and Snom led the way with five out of eleven. I mean six out of eleven. So Snom, I'm coming for you, man. I wanna beat you next week. I'll take five hundred. Yeah, you got 500. Oh, and these, it's not easy to pick. It's not easy to pick at all. Anything could happen any week at any time. Anyone can yeah, beat especially anyone. Especially week one. Especially week one. You're right, man. So that's why it's impressive. We even got, you know, five or six right. You saw everyone around the five, six range, except Arceus, who picked three right. But, you know what? Maybe next time I'll just f fade Arceus. And yeah, me and Snom, one of us will win this week because I switched my pick to Koji and he picked Proto, actually. That's a great point, Snom. So I'm excited to see that, if that shakes out. So, yeah, it depending on uh, Proto or Koji. And yeah, I was the only one to pick. Yeah, it, I, see, I, I like doing predictions, but I also hate how it, inevitably you have to pick against 50% of the league. So I hate picking against people, but I love picking people and people like Behaney was like, Tom, you never picked me in the thing. And I was like, I did pick you early and then you kept losing. Then I stopped picking you. And you started winning. I don't know what to do. So <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, just, I hope no one takes anything personally. If I don't pick them each one week or another, because I appreciate each and every one of you for just being here competing. And everyone's been like, so cool, you know? So I can't say that enough. Yeah, Jax, you got anything else to say about the predictions? I like how you don't pick yourself or anyone in your match. You know, like, I like that little thing about you. You're like, no, I don't want to pick it. I'm like, I respect the hell out of that. But anything else on no. predictions before we leave? No, I'm actually quite surprised that I even got 5 out of 10. I wasn't keeping track. <laughs> I make the predictions. Uh, usually I'll make the predictions on Wednesday for the week. I'll go through all the matches and everything like that. And then even the times that the matches are scheduled for, for some reason, that plays a factor in my head as to who I pick and stuff. And then once I make the predictions, I just wait for this pin to see how I did. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm going to try to do it like this each and every week. And Yama's like, I just figured you picked the underdog. No, Yama, I picked you because you're you. And you're a phenomenal coach, man. I just pointed at my camera. I realized I'm not on screen anymore. But all right, let's move on. To the standings in the armor division. And speaking of Yama, he's at the top with the uh one and record, two and round lost, and I think he's first because it's actually QRS, yeah. So alphabetically they both start with A B. So Yama's first because of the alphabet right now. But let's see if him and Anti could uh figure I hope they tie they both win two oh next week now. I don't know who they play. But that'd be funny if they keep going and Anti's like, I keep winning, but just because I'm ABS and not ABQ. <laughs> I'm second place. That's a little funny twist. <laughs> yeah, anti plays KD. Oh, that's not going to be an easy game at all. Which is, that's going to be a hell of a... Well, we're going through that, aren't we? Yeah, we're going through all of them. I, I never showed I'll you the PowerPoint that. either because we didn't have the pre-show meeting. I'm but so sorry. Both, both Yama and oh, Anti have the chat. almost game of, the, game of the week matches coming up, which is going to be pretty exciting. Dude. United, what's up, buddy? Yeah, what's up, United? Yeah, so this is awesome. This is the standings after week one right now. And shout out each and every one of our competitors. If you won or lost, I appreciate each and every one of you. Oh, so I didn't realize he was a Houston Hitmonchan. This is the first time I'm seeing the boy Sack was a Houston Hitmonchan. I got to go get a picture of Hitmonchan. So I should have paid attention more to this document because I completely missed this. Yo. But, all right, and let's move on to the crown division. And here we got Fox, me, and Pops at the top. And we got Smurf, MA11, and Snom at the top of the other one. Oh, actually, all three of them in the Pearl division are 2-0. and oh, And all three of them on the bottom are 0-2. Oh so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. 
That's your division, actually, Jax. Oh, I see your name at the bottom. Yeah. Because of the alphabet yep. at this point, too. So it's yeah, like... absolutely, absolutely <laughs> stacked division. It's going to be so ridiculous. Dude, I feel like everyone's been saying that. I think we just have a lot of good teams now. I think every division's just stacked because we have a lot of good players now. And who's yeah. selling merch? I mean, we should sell merch. We should sell Ally Switch shirts. Let's be real. The crown, the crown side is the best, the the crazy side. I mean, we've got like eight returning playoff teams, and then me. Well, it's nuts. <laughs> and then you got me too. <laughs> well, yeah, but but you're two and zero right now. You're one and zero, two and zero right now. So yeah. I mean, even with that, you're talking about. Eight eight teams returning from the playoffs or just outside of the playoffs. Yes, I, I mean the competition level. And Pato both both could be very tough outs in, in it, but even on the other side, yeah, I mean the way yeah. that people drafted this year was 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 crazy. Dude, the way people drafted this year was crazy, and so I'm in this league in the high roller league, and it's crazy. So this league has twelve per draft. The high roller has fifteen, and that extra three teams makes a huge difference on the strength of teams overall. It really does make a big difference. And these teams are stacked, man. You love to see it. And I think this is all we got for the standing. So, Pops, I mean, I just called you Pops. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know where I was reading that. But, Jax, you ready to move into the Week 2 matches? Yeah, let's do it. Done and done. I'm going to put my big face back on the screen. I got the Twitch viewer count. We're at nine people. Shout out each and every one of you nine. I appreciate it. And you know what? Let me write these predictions down for next week now, too. And then I was just... Uh, predictions for next week. Week two. All right. And what do we have for game one? I'm excited. So we have Behaney and the New England Pidgeots versus Alpaca and the St. John Steels. Again, in the pre-show meeting, I was going to add uh, some more stuff in the middle over here so it didn't look as empty. But again, my bad, guys. Hand up. I fell asleep on my couch. I had a wedding. I, I got home this morning. I was prepping for this. And then I completely dropped the ball on sleep and passed out on my couch. and woke up too late to adjust as much stuff as I wanted to. So thank you all for being here anyway, even though I started this 40 minutes late. So, again... We got a good matchup here, though. Behaney versus Alpaca. And I'm going to keep my streak alive of picking against Behaney because he called me out on it. So, <laughs> and I think Alpaca is an awesome competitor. I think he's one of the best coaches we have here. And he had a, a season that he was a little like, hey, it wasn't as good as I wanted to. I wanted it to be. It wasn't as good as I thought I could be. So he's coming out with stuff to prove, too. So that's why I'm picking Alpaca in this match. I'm not just picking against Behaney. I'm picking Alpaca because he's awesome and his team is terrifying, man. Look at that roster. And Jax, who do you got in this one? I Honestly, I mean, this is tough because you don't expect it. I didn't expect either one of these guys to be 0-1 right now. Yeah, wait, they're both get that out of the way first. It's kind of crazy to me that both of these guys lost their first week and yeah. they're both looking for their first win. Yeah. I've got to go with the Haney, though. As strong as Alpaca's team is, I think that the Haney's going to be on one to come out and prove, prove that his team can do more than what it what he had to do in last week. I think he got a little cute with the Reggie Steel set last week but he's got a lot of counteractive parts that go literally directly against alpaca's team so it's going to be close it's going to you know you got a g-max blastoise against a g-max charizard like what are you going to do against that and like, he's got terrakion that doesn't want to see that blastoise either yeah but he has you know, gastrodon that could help i don't know man don't sleep on alpaca's roster the way this yeah, roster is constructed gastrodon that could help but i mean at the same time I don't think that 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 Galvantula is messing around. No, it's it's or fun, or he man. could set up that Ready Steel real quick with a fake out from Mind Chow. Iron defense or, or amnesia. Yeah, you know, so it's it's it, this is going to be a good one. 
uh, I'm gonna I can't wait to watch this one. And again, you could watch this one at B Haney underscore twenty seven B H A N N Y underscore twenty seven or Z E A L P A C A L Y P S E Z Alpacalypse. I you know what? I'm gonna start putting the twitches up here with the record. That's what I think I'll put in this little blank spot between the logos from now on. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, so we'll shout out the Twitches so I don't have to spell them out for everyone. But I do want to spell them out because if you don't follow any of these guys, guys, go follow them. Go shoot them a follow, and they'll appreciate it. We all appreciate it, and we're all trying to grow our streams if we're streaming, you know? Man, this team is scary looking, though. <laughs> thank, God, thank God you can only drink six Pokemon at a time, man. Oh, my God. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and again, you brought up the good point. These are two 0-1 teams, guys. These are two 0-1 teams. So one of them is going to be 0-2, and, and one of them is going to be 1-2. and 2. I mean, 1-1. One and 1. So I'm excited to see which one comes out on top, man. And I, I'm picking out Pack in this one. Sorry, Behaney. Much love to Behaney for setting this up and creating this awesome community that we all joined. I appreciate you for that, but I don't think you have it this week against Alpaca's team. This is going to be a tough one, and I'm excited to watch. But, all right, on to the next match. Angelo versus Proto. Oof. Jax, you want to pick first this time? See, this is good. this is a really tough one because we haven't seen Proto's team. We haven't seen the way that Proto's trying to play. Mm. You know, uh, it's going to be so difficult to pick whatever Proto and Koji's teams are. You know, um, just because you don't know how well they're going to try to pilot their teams for what they do. Um, I think just based on that, and since I saw Angelo work, and he did really well. I mean, they, him and RC has both prepped, I think, fantastically for each other. He just kind of had to fell a little bit short in the TR. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna go with Angelo with this one this week, just because I've seen him work his team one. And I was thinking Angelo as well, just because I think he got the sh like a shit matchup last week against. Arceus. I think Arceus's Reggie Rock was just able to like take over the match last week. And I don't see Proto having a Pokemon that's gonna be able to do that. I don't think Angelo made one mistake in this matchup last week. I really I really was impressed with his battle style. I really was impressed with everything he was doing last week on his stream. So you know what? I think I'm picking Angelo too. And Proto, good luck, man. Good I actually I picked you in week one and then switched it to Koji. And now I'm picking against you in week two. So, I, Proto, I appreciate you, man. I love your logo, the Buffalo Hot Wings. And I love the San Diego Palkia logo. Shout out, Angelo, for that logo. Caleb made it. Amazing logos on both of these guys. And it sucks one of them's got to lose. But I, I'm going with, uh, oh, my God. I'm going with Proto to lose and Angelo to win in this one. And you guys got a sneak peek of the next game because I was uh, fucking around with the mouse. But we got Anti first KD. And Jax, you said that you mentioned this game earlier. This is one of your games to watch out for, and I can absolutely see why looking at these rosters, man. And you know what? I'm picking Anti in this one. I think Anti's roster matches up quite well into what KD tries to do. And the double haunts, double horse team, it's fun. But I really think it might start 0 2, which is kind of crazy. Right? KD lost, or am I making Yeah, KD lost to lunch Yeah, yeah KD lost. Yeah. So I think it might. I think it might be one of the 0-2 teams, which is crazy to say. So, yeah, who do you got in this one, Jax? Yeah, um, I'm, I've got to go with you, with you on this one. I think Anti is going to pull us out. Yeah. It's going to be really tough for KD to position his Pokemon the way that he needs to. And that's why I, I, I think... Um, that's why I, I think that it's not the best to have both horses in a draft format. Um, because it just requires, with you've got so much firepower that he's leading into in his team. Yeah. And being able to position them correctly in a match is all on him. And his opponent just has to worry about taking on whatever's on the field. And that decision is made for them. So I, it's... If he positions it, it correctly, KD's going to win. But uh, I think Anti's got a little bit of the momentum, and he's got less that he'll have to worry about 
with positioning Mons for. I ah, Katie's team is so scary. We saw United, who's it was in the chat before, use Obstagoon so well. It's one of those sleeper picks. I feel like the Cinderace, Spectre, or Glastry are just three of the strongest S type Pokemon we have in this format. God damn, I can't believe I'm picking against KD's team after looking at this roster and, one oh, more time. And remember, KD just made trades too, so he doesn't have Rhydon or Sylvalee anymore. Do you know or who Rhydon he or Wait, traded he traded Rhydon for Sylvalee. I'm, oh and my god. For he loves a lot of bravery. So he used all three of his trades. He used three out of four of them. He's got one left. Right on for Silvalli tier three, Thievel for Chinchino tier four, and Melodic for Braviary. Holy moly. So what is that Braviary doing now? Does he still he still has the water types in Sloking? He now has a flying normal coverage with the Defiant. In Braviary. With the boost, yeah. I think Braviary is one of the most slept on Pokemon in draft formats. So I actually love the pickup from KD. And KD, I'm, I may, if you're watching this, definitely don't reach out to United and ask him how what Braviary sets he liked. Because he definitely won't help you. And that might be a scary tandem. If KD reaches out to United, get some of those Braviary sets that United likes to run. It, it, it might be over quick for KD's opponents. So, holy moly. But, yeah, I, I'm sticking yeah, with my pick of anti right now. The the Thievel Chinchino one was is very interesting because Thievel is a very fast, very versatile dark type. But I like Chinchino a lot. I have it on my squad, and I know a bunch of different things that I could use with it. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does with it, too. So that's good to know. I, I don't know much about Chinchino other than Skill Link, so I'm excited to see how else you guys could use it. But on to match four. We got Yama versus Tutti Frutti. And these are two teams that won, actually, so one of them is going to have to lose. That sucks. But, oh, God. Yeah, this is game of the week to me right here. So, yeah, do you want to pick it first? Because what's it called? I picked the last one first. And we'll just alternate I, back and forth. Yeah. You got this one. I I'm gonna go with Tootie. You're going Tootie? And it's just because I like Xerneas. <laughs> that was the pretty deciding much. factor. That's how close That's this match is. Much That's how close this match yeah, is, guys. I think, I, I think Yam Yama's got I mean Azelf, Alolan Persian. I love that, mm. you know. Like, Azelf, Azelf, he's my dude. Like, Azelf will come back with a vengeance on my team, trust me. So, um, but yeah, I love it. the Berserker with the Steely Spirit, and he's got Kartana on there, too. That's 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 a cool combo, plus Sizor. No, I think he traded Sizor, you know? right? Or did, no, he didn't. I don't know. I don't know if I updated these recently. I, I You know what? I'll get them all updated for next week, though. I'll make sure to not screenshot them too early. But okay. yeah, because if he still has that, that's pretty, pretty nuts. Right? Did he make pretty. any trades? I don't know. I thought I I saw it might have been an I, I might be making stuff up because I'm I'm in two leagues and it's just a lot of trades going on and I know I saw Caesar and one of them get dropped so I think it was the other one. Some I might be starting rumors, but yeah, Berserker Caesar. We saw Jolt use that season two and it's one of the scarier tandems because that bullet punch becomes. One of the strongest bullet, like one of the strongest moves, a choice band at whatever the ability is with the steely spirit boost from a stab boost sees or it priority. It's it hits so hard, it hits incredibly hard. And you know why? So, says Yama's only trade here is Hydreigon for Latios, Hydreigon for Latios, which is a good trade. Okay, so that's yeah, not updated so. on the sheet. So I did know he made, made a trade. All right, so he has. Or no, wait, he picked up Hydreigon and dropped Latios. Yeah. Yeah, so the Latios put in work for him, too, with the weakness policy. Wow. Or no, he, did he drop? Yeah. Yeah. What, is it, what did this say? This could be... I was scrolling quick. I missed. Yeah, I, he dropped, I wasn't. Dropped, he he dro dropped Hydreigon for Latios. Yeah, so. Oh, he has Latios only... now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, okay. Never mind. So, yeah, he's going to use Latios well all season, I feel like. 
And you know what? I think I might pick Tootie's team. And I think looking at this roster composition for Tootie, it's going to be hard for me to pick against him any week, to be completely honest with you guys. And I'm going to let you know right now why. The Rillaboom Incineroar Inteleon, I'm a sucker for starter Pokemon. I, I always have been. I always will be. And those three are three of the better starters, in my opinion. Inteleon being probably the most slept-on Pokemon in draft. Like, it does so much well, man. If you just get it, set it up right, it could hit so hard. The Dragonite is one of my favorite Pokemons, too. The Driftlim Rillaboom combo is terrifying. He has the G-Max and Sandicon and Butterfree. Again, Butterfree is one of my favorite Pokemon, too. So I'm looking at Tootie's roster being like, there's not a lot I don't like. The Alcremi is a Pokemon I want to try in this format, too. Because the healing, if you G-Max and heal yourself up, that's so freaking valuable, man. The Sandicon being able to set sand when it gets hit is so unique. I love what Tootie did with his team composition. And I can't say that enough. And that's not knocking Yama's team composition. That's just saying, holy shit, Tootie, man. Like, there's a lot you could do. And that 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 looks like a team I would build, to be honest. That's that's how I feel about Tootie's team. And actually, Yama's team. I love the Alolan Persian Berserker Caesar. I had that all on my list. I had the Lucky Feeny on my list, too. So both of these teams are strong, but I got to give the matchup advantage to Tootie on this one. Yeah. All right. And you know what? Let's move on to the next one, because I've been rambling for a while now, I realized. And what's it called? Yo, duty is going to be a fun one. Yama, good luck, my friend. You're one of my favorite coaches, and I can't wait to see what you do. You know what? I, I really can't. And this match, we have Lunchbox versus the Boy Sack. So now that I know the Boy Sack is... Wait, let me look up the exact name. Um, What is he? The Hitmonchan. The Hitmonchan. Okay. I'm going to get a picture of Hitmonchan. Oh, I like this one. All right. So just Jeopardy music while we wait for a second. And I okay. take... Anybody know show tunes? Play them in the chat. No, 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 no. All right. Got the screenshot. Perfect. Let me close this out. Let me go back over here. Tangrowth is strong. Strong Tangrowth. Uh, cut. Paste. Boom goes the dynamite. All right. And we have the Hitmon Chance now. I just found that image on Google. But now that I know he's a Hitmon Chance, I want to, like, have a Hitmon Chan there instead of a Hatterene. I just picked Hatterene because it was on his team and one of my favorite Pokemon. But. And then this is just a picture I found for Lunchbox, too. He just said, hey, yeah, you could put a Talonflame there. I'm like, all right, let me find an awesome picture of Talonflame. Yeah, I got somebody working on uh, on Lunchbox's um, logo right now. So cool. So cool. And, yeah, it's it, again, the logos are just for fun. So there's no rush on any of this. When you get it, you get it, guys. If you don't want one, you don't want one. I, I just like to put one up here to represent each team, you know, because I, I like to have fun with it. It's a lot of fun. But uh, you picked the last one first, right? So you know what? I think I'm going to pick this one first. And fuck. I probably shouldn't have said that because I don't know who I'm going to pick. I'm picking Lunchbox. Yeah, I'm picking Lunchbox. And uh, I think the, the kicker is the Metagross. The Metagross is a problem. Entei is the only solution for that problem. But there's ways to work around an Entei on his team, on Lunchbox's team, where there's not a lot of ways to work around the Metagross. Corviknight could be a problem for it, if you know, but, like, I, I think the boy Sack is going to have a, a Metagross problem this week. So what are you thinking, Jax? I got to agree with you. Metagross is definitely a problem. But like you said, I think Entei could be could be a bit problematic for it. Um, Sableye's redirection ability. That's true. Could keep, you know, anti even Ally Shifty, Switch. Shifty yeah. uses the correct uh, correct dark moves. You know, but you also have to watch out about proccing any sort of weakness policy. It's just hard to pick against P2 and Metagross, man. 
<laughs> That's what I was looking at the top two Pokemon. And I was like, it's hard to make against a DD Hattery too, but I think P2 Metagross gets it for me in this one. Yeah, and, and Lunchbox made uh made a couple of trades that okay. are active this week. So sorry I didn't update it recently, guys. I'll I'll update all the team sheets next time. But can it, yeah, gonna, but I know he picked up um I'm gonna scroll to the draft picture. He right picked now. up uh Tangro. He dropped Jinx for Tangro and uh got the Jellicent for uh or he dropped Blissey and Jellicent for Jinx and Tangro. I'm looking at which it now. Gives him, uh fake out fake out um threat speed with an ice move. You know, priority ice moves for a threat. And you got uh, Budget Amoongus there with the Tangrowth, which is, as we saw Jade last year, or last season use it, um, is pretty thick when it needs to be. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got to go with Lunchbox here too, yeah. Oh, wow. Wait, he dropped Tangrowth, right? No, he dropped Blissey and Jellicent. Or Jinx and Tangrowth. Jinx and Tangrowth. Okay. I had it opposite for a while. I was like, did I update it? No, okay. That immediately yeah, makes his team better. Him, he, that you know, immediately he's got makes his team better. Gallus Floating that can set TR. He's got P2 that can set TR. He really didn't need the Jellicent. Um, and the, I mean, you can, when you have the opportunity to pick up a Tangrowth for a freaking Blissey, you do it. The Tangrowth is so strong. Of the time, so. Tangrowth is so strong. And then Jinx is a. Uh, so fake out ice shard this that the other thing it does so much well if you want to do a fast riperior jinx ice shard set you absolutely can now too and holy moly lunchbox says it's something really funny in the chat he said great people are picking me now i'm gonna lose so <laughs> don't uh, if you think you're gonna lose you're gonna lose and i might switch my pick to sack but right my, now that's think, my thing lb be careful about that yeah it's it just don't worry about who picks who just try to win each match each week and that's all you can do. I love it. I love it. LOL. <laughs> that's really funny. And on to the next match. We got Arceus versus Koji. And I hate to say it like this. Oh, wait. I picked first last time. So you know what? You picked first this time. Once again, it's going to be kind of difficult to pick Koji's match not seeing him in action. You know, you've seen everybody else in action. So it kind of it kind of pulls you to one side. Plus, I spent last week prepping with Arceus, so I got to go with my boy now, my Italian brethren over there. I'm going to go with Arceus. I mean, he's got a lot of control on his team, which, I mean, if you can kind of get him to make a wrong play, and you can you can break that control that he has with switch ins and everything like that, and being able to control his speed the way he wants to. If you can break that once, you've got a definite chance. Yes, you've got a definite shot, but it's hard to break it. Oh, it's it's going to be very hard to break that. Yeah. So. And so you're picking Arceus in this one. I am. Yeah, I'm going to pick Arceus this week. Yep, and that's who exactly who I'm picking too, man, because. I was just so impressed with the way he positioned every one of his Pokemon this week and the way the switches, the ally switches, the every the Amoongus Rage Powder, like the way he was able to set his Pokemon up to be in a winning situation. And Angelo didn't make any mistakes. It was just Arceus was just crazy good at positioning his Pokemon, man. So I, I think I'm going to pick Arceus until he, until he loses. And I think yeah. that's how I'm going to go. Let me just say, uh, a lot of people are shitting on Koji's team. No, I, I love it. I you love know, it. We were just but, talking about I how mean, good Tangrowth is. When you're, when you're looking at it, I mean, the bottom half of it, the trades that he made, we were all Josh and on him about trading the Greedent for for the Rapidash and everything I, like that. I miss but, that. I mean, when I you think about it, it, those are just low-tier Pokemon anyway. I would have stuck up Those were the bottom it. of his draft anyway. Dude, Galarian Rapidash is such a high attack and has a unique typing for that physical stab. I think it's one of the most slept-on Pokemon in this format, and I really hope he uses it well. I'm excited yeah. to see how he can use I mean, it. You take Clefairy, Ryolu, Tangruth, 
Tangrowth, RK9, Raichu, Kingdra, Subtle Steeler. Those are all solid Pokemon. So he's not to be slept on. Nope. Nope. Koji is one of the better rosters because he has a uh, Pelipper with Kingdra. He has a Raichu who could benefit from that. He has a Tangrowth who could redirect hits away from all of those Pokemon. He has a Selly, which we saw Jolt use on a championship team last year. The Arcanine's no joke with Intimidate or Justified. Needle King is a Pokemon that I loved playing through in red and blue. I have not used it much competitively. So I hope he gets it going well. And I could see that thing in action. And then again, Glarian Rapidash, I think is one of the most slept on Pokemon in draft leagues too. I've been saying that about Inteleon. I was saying that about Braviary. And I agree with Glarian Rapidash is in that same category in his tier. In its tier, it's just the unique, uh, the attack stat, the speed. It's just not good in the metagame right now. But this, is, this ain't the metagame. It's draft league, boys. This is draft league. I could see that Rapidash getting six kills one week. Just because it's like, oh, shit, I was sleeping on Rapidash. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I think I got to pick yeah, Arceus. I didn't, up. I didn't even know about its, its attack. So I knew it was fast because it's a Rapidash. But I didn't know that with it, its its attack stat was that high. It's, so uh, you're definitely right. With its typing and having an attack stat that high, that's pretty pretty strange to have to come across. You don't, you don't prep check. for it very well. Yeah, let me double check its attack because I'm pretty sure it's 125. Which is yeah, and if it is a beast, that <laughs> you know, it really is nuts, man. Oh no, glory! I, I lied, guys. I lied. It's the same exact. It's a one hundred, not one twenty-five. So that is a big difference. But it's a one hundred five speed, and it's eighty defense, seventy. Oh no, eighty special, seventy defense with a sixty-five HP. So it could take a hit. It's not the bulkiest thing in the world, but a hundred. So I definitely not bulky. Yeah, I knew it was over a hundred. Yeah, he said he has some sauce for it though. He picked it for a reason. You have to know that he picked it for a reason. The only problem with the match that he's coming up with Proto is Proto knew the reason that he picked it, so he's not going to be able to bring it at least for the first week. So yeah, I'm maybe next this week against Arceus we'll see it in action. I hope so. I hope so, because it's one of the cooler designed Pokemon, I think, too. The Shout out to the Glimwood Tangle. But, <laughs> you know, let's move on. So that's half, we're through the first six matches. We got six matches to go. And let's move on to the seventh. We got Fox versus Smurf. And wait, you picked first last time, so I'm going to pick first this time. And I'm going to go Smurf. And the reason why is... He's really just impressed me recently, man. The way he's used Cinderace. I think he's going to try to use the Dragonite against Fox. The Lapras is going to be a problem. I, I want to see how Fox uses Sylveon and Pikachu. And, like, the Clefairy on Fox's team is going to be so annoying once we see how he uses that, too, with the Friend Guard. It's going to make all his Pokemon super, like, unkillable. But I'm excited to see what Smurf can do. And that's why I'm picking Smurf. I'm more... This is a potential pick. I, I think Smurf has the potential to win this one. And I really, like, I, I think he can, man. I, I, I'm i excited to see how it goes. Fox is one of the best coaches we have here. And when you're picking against him, you're most likely to lose you get that pick. But I think Smurf can, uh, I think Smurf can do it, man. I, I think Smurf can do it. I'm talking myself up. I'm piping bum trash garbage up. But I think it can happen, man. And Jax, what do you think about this match? I know you love Cinderace. I do love Center Ace. I, I think it's one of the best Mon that you could have in the draft format. It's, it's I'm going to go with Fox this week. Mm. The bulk on his team allows him to be able to adjust in-game to what his opponent does. And then you add Clefairy, really too. Tough. And then you add Clefairy you to know, the natural bulk. Exactly. So, I mean... It, I I mean honestly I think it could definitely go either way. I mean Smurf has has Cinderace, which is quick and huge power. Ferramosa, which is also quick and huge power. Um the Dragonite, if set up correctly, doesn't really die. It has a bad matchup right now. now that I'm looking into it. Lapras, Magazone, Pikachu, Silva Silvalli, and Clefairy all kinda hit it hard. Yeah. So it doesn't have the best matchup this week, but you know, but he might not, you know, he might not even have to bring a Dragonite. 
Yeah. You know, because he's got he's got a prankster Klefki that can do crazy shit and a <laughs> Venusaur. You're right, man. Oh he god, could, he could ditto the Lapras. Yeah. God, you know, man. and max that, and then get his own resonance off. Like, it, imagine you got a team that goes. You got a team that goes really fast, and a team that's got a lot of bulk to it. So it's it's definitely going to be interesting. I hope that uh, Fox brings Pikachu this week, and I hope Ditto copies Pikachu. Lucky. Now that's what I'm rooting for, to be honest. I hope Fox brings Pikachu and Ditto copies Pikachu. That's what I want more than anything out of this matchup now. Yeah. I just want the fat Pikachu to be G Max. That's all I want. Amazing. All right, <laughs> and on to the eighth match, we have Matt Ma11. Oh, it doesn't copy the G-Max ability. Oh, That's wow. Sad. That is sad. I didn't know that. Thank you, Snob. So we have Pops versus MA-11. And mm. I'm, you're, you're picking first on this one. This, I didn't even see this matchup coming. This is pretty interesting. Right? Yeah, oh this God. is, I agree. This is going to be a fun one to watch. This might be matchup of the week. Yeah, it could be. I mean. Did Yama just say that in the chat, too? Hey, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is going to be a fun one to watch. A fun one to watch. Depending on how uh, Matt preps, it's going to be really, really close. I'm going to go with Pops on this one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Just because I think he's going to. I see a couple of Pokemon on his team that he could definitely do some cool stuff with against Matt. And obviously I prepped for Matt's team last week, so I can see some things that I would at least do. Um, yeah, God, this is a tough yeah, one, man. I'm definitely... You know, I, I like the trades that Matt Matt made. He had uh, Bioplume and Sun Ninetales on his team. And he traded them for the, the hail version. Uh, yeah, the sand slash and the Alolan, Alolan version. Days. I just like the Alolan version with the being able to set up uh, Aurora the Valen and everything like that. Yeah. Yep. It makes such a huge difference. And I think Pops's Reggie Rock is going to be the Pokemon to watch out for. It does. It does not match up well against the Garchomp, the Mint Shao, or the Urshifu, or the Durant actually either. But I think Pops is going to make it work somehow. Yeah, that's I have Reggie Rock in a different draft league, and it is weak to a lot of stuff. Yeah, it is weak to a lot of stuff. But mm -hmm. once you get it set up, if you can get it set up, it's a it monster. doesn't like to leave the field. Tell you that much. Yeah. Wow. You know, this is going to be a fun one, guys, and I'm excited to see what both these coaches do. And I can't say that enough about both of these guys. And Matt has had a tough first two matchups and you and Mount Pops. That is not an easy schedule for any rookie coming in. And you know what? I think we're moving on to your match next, actually. So how about you take it away first? Who do you think is going to win this one? Never mind. I know you don't pick. So just if yeah, you don't want to talk would, about it. Pick, yeah, yeah, I know you don't pick. So I'm actually picking you in this one. And it's, it's not because of Banana's Wi-Fi issues. It's because your team is fucking strong, man. Your team is going to be hard for him to stop. He has a trick room mode. I think you have a better trick room mode. He has a fast mode. I think you could stop his fast mode with your counters of like Mammoth Swine, Ice Shard, and stuff like that. So like, I think your team matches up well into him. And with his Wi-Fi issues on top of it, I don't like, I really hope he just gets through the matches and you guys are able to play three, two to three good games with no disconnects. But I'm picking you in this one, Jax. I got one. So, yeah, I know you don't want to talk much about this, so let's move on to the next one then. And I love the Dramp on your team. And this is Pato. Yeah, I love Dramp on I've got the the um, Azelf and Drampa have such crazy move pools. It's awesome. It's I love nutty. using both. Dude, they're so versatile. But you know what? Let's. Yeah. I don't want you to give away too much, so let's move on to Pato versus Snob. And um, uh, do you want to – yeah, you pick first in this one. I'm going to go with Snom because Snom's a crazy SOB. Yeah, I wrote down Snom on this one a while ago, actually. Just looking through, that was my quick pick. I like 
I like a lot of what Pato's done with his team because he's I'm actually not made a lie, trade. He was kind of crap when he drafted it. I loved his team when he drafted it, but he actually made a trade. He he made uh, Cartana for Amungus. Yeah. 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 He uh. Him, he's got the Driflin too, which I don't see on here. Oh, does he have Driflin? Yeah. Oh, so I this isn't updated. I know he asked me to get a picture of Driflim. Oh, who did he drop? Neuvern. He dropped Neuvern, too. And he has to get it for someone else, too. So he made a couple of trades since I screenshotted this a couple of days ago. But I knew I was going to the wedding on Sunday, so I, I did a lot of my prep earlier than I usually do. But, yeah, now this is a going to be a fun matchup. And, again, Pato is one of those new guys coming in with a rough fucking schedule. Going against whoever. Fox last week and now Snom this week. Are you kidding me? Like, that sucks. That yeah. schedule sucks. Yeah. I'm not two, even going to lie. Playoff teams off rip. Yeah, that's two playoff teams immediately. Like, you're right. It really... <sighs> Good luck, Pato, man. Keep your head up. And if you lose this week, don't get discouraged because you played two of the better coaches. And we saw RC start 0-5 and go on a four-game win streak. And he just won his next game, too. So his win streak hasn't stopped in my mind. And that can happen to anyone any week. Anyone, Everyone could win any week. I really believe yeah. that. I, just, I gotta pick Snom because I prepped with Snom last week or last season a, a few times. I played against Snom a few times. And it was just he, he's he's got a great head for the game and he makes some really cool moves. I mean, weakness policy Vaporeon. Who wow. does that next to his Zapto? Snom does. Like what? And actually, Snom like, just said in the chat too. He has Licky over Agron. So now yeah, Yama, he's got Licky Licky. Yeah. Yama's like, I can't wait to see what he does with Licky Licky. And yeah, Snom with the Toxic Croak too. Fox just said, yeah, no, it, this Snom is a madman. So I'm excited to see this. And on to our next match. I'm going to pick Andrew in this one. And you know why? I haven't even looked at the teams yet. 17 had one of the most demoralizing losses I think I've heard about in Pokemon in a while. With a Miss Swagger and then a, a Max Quake crit into your Pokemon. And it, it honestly feels like my week one last year where I did well my first season in Draft League. And I just kept missing Heat Waves. I kept missing uh, the important move. I kept just one thing would go wrong. One critical. Yeah, Yama got a critical hit Sucker Punch on me that ended a game early too. I ended up 2-7. and seven. And it wasn't the season I wanted at all. And I hope that's not the season 17 has but once you have all those rng stuff going against you it's hard to get that momentum back and until he gets that momentum back i think i gotta pick his opponent and andrew got a scary team man andrew's team is no joke when you look at this roster i i think 17 has a slight matchup advantage but i think andrew is just such a good coach and competitor that he might be able to take this one from 17 and again, with the momentum that I saw happening last week against 17, I just got to pick Andrew in this one. Jax, yeah, who you I'm got? Gonna go with, I'm going to go with 17 on this one. Nice. And I, I think mean, that's just the, the roster advantage pick, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, uh, 17 sets up really well against this team um, with, the, with the single strike against the Metagross and and having the the Togekiss, um, or Togekiss Urshifu and the Toga tomorrow for like the the um, redirection fairy mm -hmm. dark and steel, I like that combo a lot on teams and everything like that. Um, Andrew played really well against Pops. He always uh, does. And I think if he chooses the right leads, he can do really well. Um, but I want to see him make adjustments mid game. Yes. Better. Yep. And once he can get making adjustments mid game better that I can see with my own eyes, I think he's going to have more of an advantage. But I don't think he's quite there yet. Whereas 17 had a lot of unlucky so things great. happen, a lot of RNG not go his way that first week. 17 and I think is so maybe good. all of that piled up RNG that didn't go his way last week. Oh, you think he's going to come go back in a wave? You think it's going to be a tidal wave of good critical hits and good attack hits and everything like that coming 17 ways? 
what goes up must come down, right? Let's. Oh my God, I would wish nothing but the best. For, like, I hope that happens now because he's one of my favorite coaches. Seventeen, really. He's so cool, man. Like, I love talking to him every time I've talked to him too. We did the recap show with him. It was me, you, and him one week yep. uh, last season. So it's like he's just such yep. a cool dude. And talking to him, he really knows what he's doing. So that's why I hope he gets. I I don't want to see momentum going against him. I'm just calling it how I see it, and I see the momentum. Like that was a, from what Snom told me, the way I read that match, it, it was just unfortunate. So you know, I hope he comes back and wins, but I don't know if he's going to do it against Andrew. And into the yeah, last, and I know oh yeah, after after our match last season when I ended up beating seventeen, it was really close in the end game. Um, I just had a couple of my end game was a little bit better than his end game mm-hmm. when it came down to it, and I beat him. And after I beat him, he messaged me and was like, that's the last loss that I'm going to have. I'm telling you right now for the season. And then he went on like a crazy win streak after that. I love it. I love that attitude. He he takes losing and and learns from it and drives off of it. And I don't know exactly what the what Andrew's gonna end up doing with the with the Quagsire and stuff or the Spirit Tomb. I'm kind of interested in that, but I've just I've got to go with 17 just for the attitude that he has coming off off a loss, especially a hard loss like that, and with I think the slight advantage that he's got on team chemistry there. Yeah, I think again, I think he does have the roster advantage in this one. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see this one go either way, man. You're right. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't think this one's going to be streamed, so this is going to be one of the ones we're going to have to tell you about. But on to the last match, which actually will be streamed right here on this channel because it's my match. We got me versus Jade, and I'm picking me. What a shock. Oh, my God. But <laughs> that's a, I think I'm going to win, man. I, I always think I'm going to win. I think I could beat anyone any week. Jade is one of the best battlers we have in here, and I'm excited to see what he does. But, yeah, Jax, who you got in this one? I won't be offended if you pick Jade. Uh, I'm actually going to go with you. Awesome. If you pick Jade, the stream would have ended. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) It would have ended the stream. Don't get me wrong. I think Jade definitely can win. Oh, Um, absolutely. I just, I'm, 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 well, I want to see what he does with the, with, with his team. He's got a lot of, a lot of, uh, he's good. You know, one-off heavy hitters. With like the Haxorus and the Lando Eye, Mag Mortar and stuff like that. That's what I think is kind of odd about his his chemistry for his team. Is you don't you can't notice a bunch together. I mean, obviously, in DD and and the Hat, you know, go yeah. together and stuff like that. But he's got a lot of a lot of you know like disjointed parts in the bottom half of his team. Where I think. Your your team comp kind of goes together a lot more. You know what I mean. You can Thank use. You. you know, you may have <laughs> combos with like Gigas Weezing and and Cole and Teleon, but you can link it up with some of your your other Pokemon, and have yeah. a bit of a more cohesive six than than he has, where he might bring six and then he can only go one way with two of them, and then he goes one way with with the bottom two. You can't have a, a free flowing team. So I think his Trick Room core of Indeedy, Hatterene, Ready Steel, Rhyperior, the first four Pokemon on his roster, it's just extremely hard to prep for too. You gotta you gotta look at everything, and then not to mention, then he has a fast mode too. So he's one of my favorite teams, and he has a Zoroark we saw Yama use so well too. So this is not an easy team to prep for. He has Magmordo, which we actually also saw Behaney use in that same matchup against Yama. So his team is no joke, man. I'm excited for this one. I really hope I could win. I hope I could prove to each and every one of you watching right now that I, I am, I'm better than the two and seven record I showed you guys last year, last season. I can't, I said that, you know, but like, I, I'm, I want to come out here and start two and zero in this league. And Jade, I'm sorry you're in my way, man, but the schedule's done. Behaney and the schedule gods decided it. So now, I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta go and try to beat you, man. But this was the last match of the week, and I ha- I included the power rankings as the last slide. Oh, let me move this down a little bit. What's it called? So you can see who picked what. So that's uh, 
And now let me pick my click my camera, get myself out of here so you can see foxes. And I wanted to shout out Pops VGC's power ranking stream one more time because it was magnificent. He was so in depth with his prep on that. And I appreciated him putting the time into it. He did. And he went through why he put everyone, with, you know, like he went through every matchup and why the power rankings that he did. And you could see his week two power rankings there. I know RC has sent me his week two power rankings. I didn't have time to add them. So these are the power rankings from week one. And we'll add the power rankings for week two next week and whatnot. And we'll keep doing that. And I'm going to keep, uh, what's it called? Sending you guys to Pops the stream if he keeps doing them. And Yama just said, Tom, get that energy to win. Yeah, man, we got, we're trying to get dubs in the chat, like little Smurf said, because that's such a cool phrase, too. So, we're trying to get those dubs in the chat. But, uh, Jax, I, I think this is it for me. I got nothing else to say, other than good luck to all our competitors, and follow the CPDL12 on Twitter if you don't. Follow all the Twitch streams I shouted out. And again, Jax, do you have any last words? No, yeah, good luck everybody who's going to be out there. Good luck twice to both Koji and Proto, because they're playing two matches this week. I hope everybody has a good time. I hope every match is close, and I'll be back next week, because I'm excited to see some of these go down. It's going to be intense. Yeah, gonna Jax is going to be here every week, so I'm going to be here every week, unless something, unless an, a sporadic Vegas trip happens, or something unexpected happens. So, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you who watched this and got this far. We have five viewers left. We peaked at, like, 11 at one point, I think. I, I, did we get more? I think we got more at some point. But, like, I appreciate each and every one of you taking time to come out here and hang out with us. And, again, Jax reached out to me and said, hey, I want to be a part of this, man. Like, this is – I like what you do. Like, if anyone else wants to be a part of this and join the team, please reach out. I'd love to have you on the team, and I can't say that enough. The more the merrier. And then, honestly, I'm not going to be able to watch every game this year, like I this season, like I did last season. I'm just, I got a lot more going on in life right now. So that's why if any, the more people that help out, the better, you know, the less games I have to watch selfishly too. So I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I just, I don't have the time as much. So I like doing this and I want to be as in-depth as possible. So I like taking notes on the matches and whatnot. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. And Jax, I can't say thank you enough for joining me and I'm excited for next week, man. Yeah, let's do it. And all I'm right. Ready to get it going. Yeah, thank you, Lunchbox. Well, that happen immediately. <laughs> thank you, Lunchbox, Snom, and Yama in the chat. You guys have been so active. I see Foxes in the chat, too. It's not like I appreciate each and every one of you. I really can't say that enough. I, re I really can't because you guys have given us the time. Time is so valuable, man, and I appreciate you hanging out with us because I have a blast doing this. And I, I know, Jax, it sounds like you do, too, and it sounds like everyone does in the chat. So this is a fun little community we got building, man. And I'm excited to see the matchups this week. But actually, you know what? Before I let you guys go, let me see if I can figure out how to... Uh, go to your streamer dashboard. Yeah, you know exactly Click what I was going to say. You I want to see somebody. if I can raid someone. So stream yeah. manager. Oh, Koji's still on. Koji's still on? Koji. All right, so let's go. Guys, we're going to try to figure out how to raid Koji. I don't know how, so we're going to try to figure it out. Can I do it from my iPad, or do I have to be on a desktop? You know what? Let me go to my desktop over here. Because it might be Yeah, easier. whatever you're signed in uh, under for Twitch, you can do it on. I'm actually not signed in on this one, so I'm signed in on this computer. All right. and uh, Perfect. Make me a mod, and I'll do that. It's not, I don't, how do I make you a mod? Uh, Let's type backslash. Uh, what is it? Yeah, mod Snomsky, backslash mod, and then type the person's name. Do I put a space? Yeah. Well, no, not between the backslash and mod. Just do backslash mod, and then the person's name. Did I do that right? Yep. Now I can't see the chat, though, because Snom's name is there. He's got the sword. He's in it. He's in it. He's got the sword. You sorted him. Yeah, I knighted you. But so now what do I do on my end? Yeah, Snom. I almost just accidentally banned Snom. Holy shit. <laughs> don't do that. No, I, uh, that's because I, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like scrolling over stuff. <laughs> and it's like, ban? No, I don't want to ban. I want to get this little thing off. Okay. 
So, Tom, in your chat, type backslash raid. Yep. And then space Professor Koji. Do I press at? The same way you did it to make Snom a, a moderator. Just backslash raid. Space and Professor Koji. And then it says raid now. Raid now. You can if you, if you have it. There you go. Oh my god. We figured it out, guys. And also, before, so I don't know if you're still here, but I got two videos coming out on YouTube at 8 a.m. And I got two matches this week at the High Roller. Check out my Twitter if you want them. Wait, so did we successfully do this? Yeah, click end stream on yours thing. And you, we rated him. And we rated him. All right, so I'm going to end the recording yeah. here too, guys. Thank you so much.